There was a time in my life where I believed that I wasn't worthy of success. And this was around the time where it really mattered. Because growing up younger, for whatever reason, I had relentless confidence. But in hindsight, I was using an alias, which came with graffiti. I had an identity that I had created that was a degree separated from my government name, you might say, my, my true self, the, the self that I, I identified with more personally. Not to say that our government name is our true self, but you get the idea. And so when I released that alias and I decided to go public with my actual name and my face after spending years in the streets painting illegal graffiti, I was confronted with all of the insecurities and the beliefs that came from my upbringing. All of the beliefs and, you know, frames of, uh, of reference that connected more to my family and my cultural upbringing as opposed to the street world identity and relationships that I had built over the last decade at that time. And the reason that this was a problem was because I was now roped into an industry that had a perception of me and I had interests and aspirations that were aligned with that, that world. But when I decided to bring out my own identity and I, I owned my person, you might say, I was met with all of those conflicting beliefs, all of those not hard upbringings coming from a, a happy family uh, of uh, Hungarian immigrants. And my family was great. I was raised in a beautiful home and a beautiful uh, childhood. And, you know, despite my parents being divorced and whatever financial troubles we had, I felt great. I was happy to be a kid and I was happy to be in that world. And so there wasn't really anything from my upbringing that related to the hardcore hip hop and graffiti world that I was now in. And that was challenging because I needed to decide who I was going to be in the world and how I was going to achieve the things I wanted to achieve authentically. But now there was a conflict of interest. There was a conflict of reality because I was playing in a world that didn't reflect my truth, the, who, the person who I really was. And this is very confusing because I didn't know where I fit into the world after, after all. And what came up was tons of self-doubt, conflicting ideas and beliefs about who I am and how I can act and what's okay and what's not okay, how much... Uh, how comfortable I am with money, like what is okay with terms of sales, like how to appear in the world, like can I show up in a hip hop way that's like, you know, more street and more urban, or do I have to like become the person that my, my family raised me to be? And as a man, this is very challenging because your family wants you to be that child. They remember you as this, you know, this soft, you know, bundle of love that they fucking invested in for multiple decades. But the reality is, is that you grow up into an individual with your own aspirations, your own interests. And sometimes that version of you doesn't match up and you are going to have to make a decision to either become the person that you want to be or live as the person that your family thought you were. And this is a moment of breaking free from subordination and taking the next steps on the master's path, which is actually a path of actualization, self-actualization, individuality, where you become self-fulfilled, you become self-governed. And as you go through this transition as, a, as an individual, or as a, from a subordinate to an individual, free-thinking individual, you will have mental friction. You will have this experience of splitting psyche and it's very uncomfortable. Some people will call it the dark night of the soul. If you've seen Fight Club, there's that moment where the main character sees Tyler Durden and there's that like brain warping moment where he realizes that he is that person. It kind of feels like that. And it was very challenging. It was emotionally volatile. I had tremendous mood swings. I was anxious. I had depression. I couldn't fucking... I experienced depression rather. I, I couldn't communicate properly. My self-talk was horrendous. I was filled with all of these conflicting thoughts and feelings and beliefs that didn't match up with where I needed to go. And I had to invest myself into hours and hours and hours of study of psychology and the anatomy of emotion and, then, and how the mind works. And the conclusions that I came to were 
You are not your thoughts, you are not your feelings. You are a spiritual being with a mind and a body, and both of those are tools that are here to enable you to achieve what you want. However, if you haven't taken the time to organize and order both of them, your physique through fitness and health and well-being and taking care of it and treating it as a premium vehicle, a luxury vehicle, a performance vehicle, and your mind organizing it in your favor, revisiting past experiences and clearing up your judgments of them in order to have a clear and supportive imagination and inspiration of the future. Because that which you perceive of the past as being negative or positive will mirror into your future. And so I had all of these experiences bottled up and bagged up in my art, in the archive of my mind about why I can, why I shouldn't, why I don't deserve what it is that I want. Guilt, shame, fear, doubt. All of these things, which I had to understand their anatomy in order to rewire them and release them permanently, which I have. The process was very scientific. We teach it inside my community. But once you understand the anatomy of these emotions and you release your past judgments, your mind clears and it now becomes a vehicle or rather a software that can serve you. It is like an AI almost where you can ask it questions and you can use the bank of information provided to it through wise consumption of material, mentorship, proper execution of tasks and missions according to your word so that you build up evidence in your mind of what you can do and what is not possible for you. And then you constantly push the barriers of that to find out where the limits of your potentiality are because you were called to do that anyways. And so when you achieve that through the mind and the body, you now realize that you are of a higher plane. You are of a next level, the spiritual plane. That is where your inspirations, your true calling comes from. And that place, fear and doubt don't exist there. There is only peace. There is only love. There is only objectivity and there is true creative power, unlimited creative force. It is only through your perceived limitations of the mind and in this physical plane that you believe that you cannot use those powers, but you know that you are having messages and whispers coming from that place that are saying, you can do this. You are here to do this. This is why you are here. And then you have the illusion of limitation that comes from this place. And so I have a, a message that I wrote years ago that I wanted to share with you guys to conclude this this lesson for today so that you understand some of where I was at and hopefully find some solace in your own development as you become the person that you want to be. And it is this, I want you to know that a part of you will try to convince yourself that you lie to the world. You must know in your heart and your soul that you are actually what you created and that is absolutely okay. Do not listen to the voice on the outside. Do not listen to the voices that conflict with your higher calling, the vision that you have for yourself. Because if the voice doesn't align with that place, it means that it's not truly for you. You are what you decide. You are who you create. And you do that through your habits and actions every single day. And so choose the higher plane, choose the higher calling, become the person that you want to be. And I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>